Now is the time that I get to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> when you've known someone for so long, they're friends. They're friends in good times, and they're friends in bad times. They're friends in the little times, and they're friends in the big times. And uh, I am so honored that such amazing friends are here. I know I could call them up if I needed to, and they could be right there. I have no doubt of that. And I know if I were to call on them and ask them to pray, I know that they would pray. And if you want to know who brother and sister all mine count as their best friends, it's these two right here. And you know the quality of a person by their friends. And brother and sister McKee are so top notch. It's not funny. They are amazing people. And I know, Sister McKee, I know you're going to sing, but let me get all my introductions done now, and then y'all can do whatever you need to do. I want to turn this completely over to the both of you, but um, it is truly my honor. It is my honor, Brother McKee, to introduce you and your lovely wife. You've come, I know, with a word from the Lord. I know you've prayed. I know you've sought the Lord. And I know Sister McKee has been praying as well. I love these two. I can't say enough good about it. Um, but Brother McKee, if you want to come or your wife, that's up to you. I'll let you. But I'm going to turn this service over to them. Let's get behind them and see what the Lord will do today.
So today, we'll just lift him up and worship him. There's nothing. There's nothing that he will not do for you in this place here today. I love my wife. I hope I do. <laughs> Man, <yeah. laughs> I do. She, she's the backbone of it. I mean, <laughs> she, she keeps me upright. I think she, we balance each other. And she keeps me right. Just worship her. I think we balance each other with the help of the Lord, right? Everything we do is through Him. Amen. Um, you know, we're in a time and a season of giving. And you have been given a wonderful gift. Pastor and Sister Romine. Yes. And we have such a history, we've already spoken about that, we won't go there anymore, but there's just not enough words, you know, that we can say about all of the relationships that we have come to know and been a part of where we've all touched each other's lives. And even though I don't know you in particular, you've touched my life because I know that we share a common denominator of love because you're here to worship the Lord. And so as Sister Romine goes through her Jesus journey, I went through a Jesus journey a while back, and a year ago or so, and I'm just thankful I have shoes on. <laughs> you know, um, we're not fancy people, and uh, we just give all the credit to the Lord this morning, and um, we are here to usher in the Spirit of the Lord. And this is an old song that he worships through songs, new songs, any kind of songs, but our son, um, our son has a two-year-old little boy, his name's Silas, and he says, Mommy, he says, sing light song, Mommy, he's two, he says, uh, he'll tell Alexis, he'll say, sing light song, Mommy, you know, this little light of mine, and so we're going to sing a light song, but it's going to be called Welcome Into This Place, okay, so just uh, sing along if you know it. Jesus, you bless. Welcome to this.
all about the name of Jesus. Amen. It's all about the name of Jesus. Amen. Because see, everything is about Him. That's right. Amen. Nothing was made, nothing is here without that name. And before I get to preaching here, I want to sing an old chorus. <laughs> I know you don't bless that wonderful name. Oh, yes. Because I believe sometimes we just got to get out of our mode. And, and I like new songs, but I love the old choruses yes. and the old songs, and I worship with it all. Yes. And can I make this statement? If you can't worship with the new ones, you need to pray. <laughs> because you can't worship and God does work in the new songs. Yes, but can I tell the younger generation that God still works in the old songs? Yes. And I believe that you can uh, have a mixture. So how many is going to sing with me? How many know that song? Bless that wonderful name yes. of Jesus. And Woo, I can't on. play like Sister Ray and I can't sing like Sister Ray. And I can't play the drums, and I can't play a guitar. The only blessing that God gave me was two hands that I could clap with. How many got two hands in here today? Yes. Yeah. Sister Pat. Remember Jason. And I told them our church, it's been about three weeks ago, they were sitting down and just couldn't, just seemed like they couldn't worship. And they just, either they couldn't or they didn't want to, Brother Robbie. And so Sister Greg knows me and Robbie knows me and Sister Brady knows me. Sister Pat Heatherly knows me. A little bit of. Yeah. <laughs> came up in me. And the Lord brought Jason to my mind. If you didn't know Jason, he wasn't had a lot of handicaps. Yes. But he was such a precious young man. Yes. He didn't have all I told him, I said, I have a new young man who's in the youth group. I said, when you sit down on the Lord, you sit down and you don't want to worship. Come on. Something comes over me, Brother Robbie. I don't take nothing for granted. Right. I don't take anything for granted to God. Right. And I told him the story. I said, I remember watching him sit on the front row. When that music started, he was up. And they began to clap. Yep. Everything didn't look right, brother. No. But he didn't care. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Because see, he had a relationship with God. Yes, right. And, and, and I'm going to preach about it. And he wasn't going to let anything get in the way. All right. His teenager had the sure, church. He just had problems. Wasn't going to let nothing get in the way. But he, when it works, he, he could clap. Yes, he would. And I told him, I said, I'll tell you, said, you better be very careful how you treat God right. when you come in his presence. Yes. There's a sweet presence of the Holy, not because I'm here, because you've prayed, but there's a sweet presence here, Sister yes, Romine. Glory. Yes, glory. Real Romine, if you're watching, because you've all prayed yes. and fasted. Yes. But there's a sweet presence in this place. Because when people gather together to hear from God, yes. not from me, right. not from a man, right. I'm just the vocal that comes out. Yes. And yes. it better be what God wants to say. Yes. But you're hearing from Him. Right. Then we ought to enter His presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just close your eyes and lift your hands. I'm going to take my time here. I got things to do.
do here later this afternoon, but I'm not going to rest just to get out of here and get to it. Right. They can wait on me up there in Indianapolis. But we're going to enter, come on, we're going to enter into the presence of God. Because I believe God's got something for somebody in this house. Come on, somebody. Just reach out to him in this house.
praise God. I'm not a long-winded preacher any, by any means, so don't panic. Everybody say, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. Verse 19. This is what the writer says. So he departed thence and found Elijah, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelve, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Verse 20, and he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? Verse 21, And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and went after Elijah, and ministered unto him. And with the help of the Lord today, I want to, I want to uh, preach or teach whatever the Lord wants me to do here real quick. Because I believe God's got something for somebody. Come on. Bless the Lord. On this thought. Follow, forget, and reach. Right. Come on. Follow, forget, and then reach. Mm -hmm. And keep this little thought in your mind. Keep your eyes on the target. Keep your eyes on the target. Mm -hmm. Brother Robbie, would you pray? Lord, we thank you for the spirit that we fill in this place. Lord, we thank you for the anointment of your word. We thank you for the prayers that have been prayed and the worship that's gone forth. And Lord, would you touch our minds, touch our hearts. Yes. Lord, at the end of this message, that the altar be full, that somebody's lives be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated here today. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Once again, I want to thank Pastor Romine, Sister Romine, Sister Ray, and all the leadership for having us down today. Yes. Uh, we are, it's good sometimes just to get away. Yes. I was shocked when Brother Romine asked me to come down. Uh, and because we're having church now for ourselves. Up at the Directional Gardens, and they're, they're in good shape. They're doing fine. I know they're praying for us, and I've been praying for them this morning. Amen. And, uh, but I really believe that in the day that we find ourselves in, we, we have to keep our eyes on the target. Uh, there's so many distractions and so many things that's going on in this world. And uh, you really can't keep a, a focal point on. They're, they, they're happening so fast that it's hard to keep up with everything. Right. But as children of God, we are children of the light, not children of the dark. Right. So we need to keep our eyes fixed on God and fixed on. We need to be aware of what's going on around about us. But we need to keep our eyes on the target and today's message and what I want to try to get across is that we, we need to be able to continue to follow but in the meantime while we're following we've also got to forget some things and then we got to be reaching continuously reaching further because we don't know when the Lord no one no man nobody knows when the Lord's coming how do you right. understand that here today right. no one knows when Jesus is coming back uh, to get his church so we still the Lord tells us that even though you don't know when I'm coming, though, the, the process is occupied till I come. Right. Yes. You keep doing what you know to do. Right. Doesn't mean we go hide in a cave somewhere. We don't run off somewhere and cover our head up and say, I'm just going to wait for Jesus to come back because that's not the will of God. How right. many here today want the will of God working yeah. in your yeah. life? How many want to be doing what God wants you oh, to, yes. to do? I believe God's got a job for each and every one of us to do, right. and we need to be about doing that. I was in the military, and let me just give you a little thing here to kind of bring this around, possibly, Lord willing. I was in the military, and, and some of you probably were in the military also, and you, you had to go through a qualifying process with your, your weapon. You had to, you had to be able to, to, to shoot a certain number and, and to be able to uh, progress on to uh, the next level and do all those things. And so you went to what they would call a firing range or a, a target practicing place, and and there was a, a, a range of fire, and, you, and, and these, this, uh, some of them were, uh, some of the older folks that was in, maybe you really, you know, they used the uh, old uh, paper targets, that way down range, and you had to shoot at the paper targets. Well, 
when, when I was in, they had the electronic targets that popped up and they would move and, and, and they would always give you instructions and, and they taught you how to get a good uh, position in, uh, in, in firing that weapon so that you would be stable and that you could keep your focus. How many understand living for God is focus? Yes, right. it is. Living Amen. for God is keeping in focus because right. there's so many distractions. Young people, there's distractions for you, there's distractions for middle-aged people, and there's distractions even for us older folks. We can get distracted by a lot of things. It, 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 it varies in age, but there's still distractions at each point of our life. How many know that here yes. today? Yes. And so they would tell you as you began to learn to fire, and, and some knew already knew about weaponry, but they would give you these uh, uh, positions that you would take, and then they would they would tell you, you know, make sure you're stable and make sure you keep the weapon at a certain level and keep this arm up, and, 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 and everything was for a purpose. There was a reason why they wanted you to do that. And then they would tell you, they'd say, you know, make sure that you take a breath in between each shot, you know, let that, when you're shooting, let that breath out as you're shooting because if you're, if you're trying to breathe and pull that trigger, you can jerk off just, you know, jerk just enough to get it off the kelter, off the target, off of where you're shooting at. And then that way you'll, you'll miss what you're aiming at. So they would tell you to control your breathing and then they had all these things. Did I tell you that living for God it is a process and yes, there's a lot is. of things that you have to, to do that go along with living for God? Yes. It's not just... Hey, I'm just going to come in and repent of my sins, and we need to repent of our sins. And I, I'm not just going to get baptized in Jesus' name, and we do need to be baptized right, in right, Jesus' right, name. Right, and, and I'm not just going to get the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, because we do need to receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. And we, that is the evidence. Speaking in other right. tongues is the evidence right. of receiving the Holy Ghost. Yes. But can I tell you that that's just getting into the door? Right. That's just getting right. into the entrance right. of serving right. God. That along with that comes a lot of directional things. And along yeah. with that comes a lot of teaching, and with that comes a lot of other things, and there's gifts of the Spirit, and there's all these things. But can I tell you that the main focal point that God wants you and I to really get a hold of is hey, keep your eye on the mark. All right. uh, Paul went into the Corinthian church and he had to straighten some things out, and here's what he told them at the end of that. If you read there, he said this he said, Can I can I tell you that you've been deceived and you're doing some things that's out of whack, and you put too much emphasis on this, and you put too much emphasis on on that. Right. And, but yet we do need this and that. Uh -huh. He's with me. We, all, right. all this and that does right. work with it. Yeah. But then he, 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 he sums it all up and he tells me, he says, but can I tell you that it's in the simplicity. All right. It's in the simplicity of the gospel of Christ. All right. it, 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 you've got to get the focal point. You've got to realize it, it's a, there's a main, Sister McKee, there's a main target that I, you right. need to keep your eyes fixed on. Right. Can I tell you, we live in a world that's full of media, junk and trash and media that's getting our eyes off of the main focal point. That's why the world's in the shape of But the church shouldn't get lulled to sleep and fall into that atmosphere. But we need to keep our eyes fixed on the mark. And the mark is Christ Jesus. And the mark is living for God. And keeping our hearts and our minds and our souls right. Can I tell you that we're not perfect? Amen. Amen. No, no. <laughs> I'm still human. Right. Pastor Roland's still human. Yes, he is. Sister Roland's still human. Yes. In order to do that, though, we have to do. do we have to keep our eyes focused right. on what God wants us to do. Right. That's we can get so caught up with the church across town, and we can get caught up with the church down south, and we can get caught up. We we don't worry about the church across town. Don't right. worry about the church up right. town. Right. Don't worry. Right. You worry about the. Come on. You worry about the body of believers that's within your church, and we need to fellowship with everyone. Yes, we do need to fellowship. But that can you know if you'll keep your mind and your eyes focused on what God is calling you to do? How many believe God's got something for you to do here today? How many believe God's got a work for you to do today? And so we find out that, can I just give you this quote? There's another known quote from a, a, a gentleman, or maybe a lady, didn't say, it's an unknown. But this is what was written. It says, aim at your target without no distractions. Yeah. Focus. See, I, I, I need to lose weight. <laughs> yeah. But I have a problem. It's 
my mouth. <laughs> and, and I got another problem. I, I like ding dongs. Oh, bless you. And I like Twinkies. And, and, true confession. And, and so the problem is, is we're taking care of my mother, and she's at our house, and she loves ding dongs too. So how do you tell an 85 year old lady? She can't have no more ding dongs in the house. <laughs> so we buy the ding dongs and they're in the cupboard. Oh, bless you, Lord. While I'm trying to lose weight, I still can't resist going over and grabbing the ding dongs out of the cupboard, even though they belong to my mother, when no one's around. That's a distraction. You see, you see where I'm at here today? Sure. This isn't going to be a profound message, so if you're looking for some. Uh, you, Preach you, you, the word. Message, man. This is just Doug McKee at his just finest right, right here. All right? <laughs> but I got a point here we're getting to. It's a distraction. Uh -huh. it, it gets me off kelter of what I really need to be doing. Yes. Uh -huh. right. Can I tell you that if you can get your mind clear yes. and get your eyes off of things around about us, oh, that's why right. the writer said this. He said, we don't walk by sight. Right. right. We, That's we, right. can't, you can't serve God by sight. Right. Now what I mean by sight is, I'm talking about natural sight. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the things and you view the things of God through spiritual insight, right. yes. then you get a whole different perspective of right. what God's trying to do. Right. Because if we looked at it through natural sight, we would be in very bad trouble. Yes. And if we looked at it and we made our judgments by the natural sight, then we would be in detrimental trouble. Right, right. We, we would never reach where we want to go. But there's something about what Elijah did to Elisha when he hit that man on the back. And I'm going to move pretty quick. When he hit that man on the back, something changed in him. Yes. Yeah. Come on. If you remember the reading that I read for you, it said that he, he made one statement. He said, i got to do one thing. There, there's one thing that I have to do. I gotta go back to my mom and my dad and I gotta kiss them goodbye. Mm -hmm. But other than that, mm -hmm. I'm gonna follow after you. Right. Other than that, I'm gonna hook right. up after you. Can I tell you, we've all got things going on in our life, right. but can I tell you something? You can't allow those things that follow around you and the things that you're in the middle of, and not bad things or not even good things, whatever it might be, but you can't allow those things to drag you down right. and deter you from doing what God wants you to do. That's right. You need something good. Yes, that's what the Apostle Paul said. He said, lay, a, lay aside every." Sin that so would easily beset you. Yes. And then he said, cast off every weight. Yes. The weight wasn't a sin. Right. The weight was just things that get attached to us that we... Right. Oh, man, I can really deal with that. The weight is the thing that gets a hold of you. And it's not necessarily bad, but it's not good for what you need to be doing right. for the, right. Right. For the kingdom of God. Right. So Paul said, you got to look at those things and you got to see. That's why Paul says, there's some things I can do that you can't do. Right. And there's some things you can do that I can't do right. because of this reason. Right. What you right. can do and what you know how to handle, I can't handle it. Now, he wasn't talking about sin. What he was talking about was just your everyday life, the things that you get involved with. Can right. I tell somebody in here today, I can't help you do that. Pastor Romart can't help you do right. that. The only person that can help you do that is you getting a hold of God. Right. And praying and seeking the face right. of God right. and saying, God, show me what I need to throw right. over here. Right. Show me what I need to cast over right. here and help me to get a hold right. of where I need to go right. in you. Right. Amen. Amen. And that's what Elijah did. Elijah, when he hit him on the hit Elisha on the back, Elisha said, I gotta do, there's one thing I gotta do. I gotta go back and I gotta tell my mom and dad bye. I know I've got to forget it, but when I do that, when I get behind all that, I put that behind me, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to follow you with everything that I have. Can I tell you, let me just give you a little more about what Elijah did here. Elisha did. Elisha kept following him. If you go to chapter 20, 2 Kings, not chapter 20, 2 Kings, but 2 Kings, very simply, I'm not going to read all these scriptures, but he said this as he began to follow him. Elisha, Elijah said, I gotta go over here. Yeah. And Elijah said, "Okay." And Elijah said, "But you stay here." Right. And Elijah said, 
Uh -uh. He said, I'm sorry, I can't stay here. Right. I made up my mind, I'm going to follow you. Right, right. He went a little bit further and he said the same thing. Yeah. He said, Elisha, I got to go do something. Mm -hmm. I need you to stay here. <coughs> Somebody get me here today. Yeah. He said, I need right. you to stay here as I go over here. And Elisha said, no, that's not happening. Right. Because see, something happened to you. Come on. When God changes your life, he changes it for a reason. And that's he changes right. it for his purpose. Yes. And he said, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm going to follow you. And he said it again, he did it three times. And the last time he said, look, I got to go over here. And he said, I'm sorry, but you don't understand something. I, I made up my mind. We used to sing an old song in the song book. It said, I am determined right. to hold out to the end. To the end. Yes. Jesus with me. is with me. Yes. On yes. him yes. I can depend. Right. For I know I have salvation. Yes. For I what? Feel, Feel it in my soul. Yes. I am determined yes. to hold out to the end. Right. Can, can anybody give me a witness to that? Are you determined to hold out yes. to the end? Yes. Are you determined no matter what comes your way, no matter what unfolds in your life, no matter what this world might bring, no matter what life might bring, I'm going to stand and spread my shoulders and I'm going to say, I don't know where you're going, but I know one thing, if Jesus over here, that's where I'm going. And if Jesus goes over here, that's where I'm going. And if Jesus goes back there, that's where I'm going. And if Jesus decides not to come back for another 50 years, then guess what? When they close that lid on that coffin in my face, I know where I'm going to wake up at, and it's going to be in the presence of God. I'm going to follow Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a type of shadow what Elijah did with Elijah. Right. Because see, Elijah was a topic of the former reign, mm -hmm. and Elisha is a topic of the latter reign. God's got a purpose. Yes, he does. But you've got to keep your eye on the target. Yes. Yes, Lord. Elders yes. in here, you can't lose sight. Yes, right. Lord. Right. Middle age, you can't lose sight. Right. right. Younger generation, keep your eyes sharp and focused yes. on what God wants yes. you to do. No matter what. I'm all about somebody giving me a word, and I'm all about somebody helping me, and I'm all about praying, and I'm all about all those things as we need to do it all. It's all about it. But can I tell you something? You will never get the exact words that you need to hear unless you seek the face of God and get a hold of God for yourself. And allow God to tell you where God wants to be. Can I tell you, you're where you need to be today. This is your home church. This is your church. This is where God brought you. And this is where you need to be because God wants to build a church on this side of town. This church, come on, a lot of people thought this church would be torn down. Yes. To his future. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Please help us. Close your eyes and lift your hands for just a minute. Jesus, in your name. Come on, let's be little here. That's just good. I want you to think about it. Come on, listen to me. You got to cut the oxen up. You got to destroy the plow. Yes, Lord. And you got to turn and get your eyes. Give her something. Come on, somebody listen to us. For a second, what this preacher's saying. Listen to what your pastor's been saying. God's got a future. Jill, come on, God's got a future for you. Brother, you're in here for a reason. He put you in this building for a reason. Sister, he put you in the building for a reason. He put you in this body of believers for a reason. He tapped Elisha on the back, Sister Pat, for a reason. He could have hit any real man along the way, but there was a reason why he hit Elisha. Some aren't willing to cut it up. Some aren't willing to destroy the plow. Come on. Some. Some aren't willing just to forget. Grab a hold, follow. Apostle Paul made this statement. And Philippians, listen to this. When that mantle, I'm going to get to Paul. When that mantle, when he seen Elisha go up, and that mantle fell. And he went over and he picked it up. Mm -hmm. He's picking it up. See, pastor, your pastor can't pick it up by himself. That's right. No. First lady of this church is the wrong line. Can't pick it up by herself. Right. Come on. It's good. Can't do it by herself. Mm -hmm. Got a good body of believers. A good crap. It's yes. good. Yes. yes. When you see that fall, sis, you look back. I'm sure you I know I asked for the double portion. <laughs> double portion. Reach. Mm. Remember, follow, forget, reach. Mm -hmm. The double portion. He could have said, just give me what you know. Mm. Just, hey, let me know what you know. Uh, everybody, I see what you did. It was great. If I just know, if I just know what you know, I'll be good. Right. Can I tell you, you can't get by with just knowing what they knew 20 years ago? Come on. Right. Right. No. Can, can I tell you that you can't? I'm not talking about doctrine changing. Right. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about right. there's some things you got to do. We got to do different uh -huh. today. But there's, there's some ways. It's not different sin. The devil just pack, packages it differently. Yes, right. yes. How many know that? Oh, yeah. So Psalmist said there's nothing new under the sun. Right. That's true. So what he was writing about, he said, look how much you're saying. There's nothing new. Everything that they're going to go through. 500 years from now, you're going, we've done been through, but he just packages it different. Right. Yeah. He, 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 he's seen it, he said, I want a double portion, but what he was doing is he was, he was saying, look, I, I know what you had was good because I was with you. But he said, but you know what? I can't just settle with what was good. I want more. Yes. Yeah. Can I tell you, you will not insult God for asking him for more uh -uh. Right. Uh, no. than what your former pastor had? Mm -hmm. or what your, right. your father or your mother had uh -huh. in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, I want more than what I had. Oh, yes. Brother yes. Yes. I want more Come on. than what my pastor yes. gave me. I, I want more knowledge. Yes. I want more of God in me. Oh, yes. I want more fire in me. I want more of desire in me. Right. Come on. Come on. I, I, I'm so thankful for right. all those things. I'm thankful for all that. Yes. But I want more. Yes. I, yes. I want more. Yes. I said, I want more. Yes. I want more out of God. I want to see more. Can I tell you, He's not limited to anything. He's not bound to nothing. He is an ending of His blessings. He's an ending of His power. He's an ending of His healing. He's an ending of His saving. God can do anything. For somebody like Peter who will be radical enough to say, I don't know if I can step on this water or not, but I know one thing I see Jesus and I've been around him long enough. I want to go to him. And he was right. That's radical faith when you just jump out of a boat in the middle of a storm. I think some of us need to just jump out of a little compromise. 
custom boat that we're in right now, that complacent boat, and get a little radical with our faith. Come on. Yes, Jesus. And believe God can do it. Yeah. Right? Robbie, God can do it. Right. He can do anything. You can build your school. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Come on. You can win every young person around you. Right. True. You can win every neighbor that's right. Are you willing to reach All right. for it? That's All good right. teaching. Paul kind of explains it this way, and I'm closing, Sister Ray. Listen to this. Paul says this in Philippians chapter uh, 3. He said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whom, listen to this, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but done that I may win Christ. Nothing in this world worth having unless you have Jesus in your life. Amen. I'm going to say that again. There is nothing. I love my wife. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I got five of them. I only have six. I love them all. But can I tell you if they all turn their back on God? You've come too late to tell me I'm wrong. Because see,
Verse 12, I'm not going to, I'm sorry. Man, I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to hear this. You need to hear this. In verse 12, he says this. He says, not as though, listen to me, not as though that I had already attained. Man, that, that's, that's pretty powerful when the, the Apostle Paul's telling you and me. I, 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 he was struggling this and he was going to let everybody know. I know I'm real smart and I know I've written a lot. God's given me a lot to write. But I still haven't grasped the whole thing yet. Can I tell you, God's got endless knowledge and endless wisdom and endless love and endless healings and endless miracles and endless signs and endless wonders. And His salvation is going to keep going on until He comes back. And Paul says, I, I haven't attained it yet. Either we're already perfect. No way on this planet was he perfect or are we perfect. Yeah. But he said this, he said, but I follow Come on. Yeah. after. If that I may apprehend. Yeah. Man, this is good. Yeah, it's good. He says yeah. that I may apprehend. In other words, take control of. Uh -huh. Like you're being arrested. You might hear me in jail lately, don't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Paul, Paul spent most of his time in prison. So he used that as an analogy. He said, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. In other words, I don't mind being in jail and incarcerated by Jesus. You know, that's what's wrong with us. Me, you, all of us. We, we, we don't let ourselves be allowed to be incarcerated by God. I want him to get a hold of my heart. I want him to get a hold of my soul. I want him to get a hold of my mind. Paul says, but I haven't apprehended that which I also am I apprehended in Christ Jesus, of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, listen to it, forgetting those things which are behind me. Yes. Jesus, Jesus. Push it back. Push them away. Yes, I made mistakes. Yes, I failed. Yes, I did this. Oh, man, we'll take it a little bit deeper, can I? Paul, I didn't even see him say, yes, I healed last week. God healed through me last week, but I'm forgetting because he's got something better. He's got something better today. Oh, man, come on. Thanks, Brandon. Did you catch what I said? Even the good things. That means when he says the word forget, doesn't mean he erased it totally from his mind. He said, I'm not going to dwell even on the good things. Right. Because God's got something better for you today. God's got something fresh for you today. He said, I can forget those things which are behind me. I'm, I'm almost done. And reaching forth. Reaching forth unto those things which are Somebody, you want to grow in God, you want to get closer to God. Nobody's looking around. 
Somebody needs to literally take that step of faith and say, you know what? Sometimes faith is a natural thing first. Peter had to step out of the boat in order to walk on the water. So it was a natural response that he had with faith mixed with it that allowed him to walk on the water. Sir, if you want to grow closer to God, step out of that pew. Step out of that place where you're at and say, God, here I come. I'm going to press forward. Young lady, you don't know which way to go and you don't know where your life's headed. Can I tell you, God's got the answer. Yes. God's got the answer, but you got to step out by faith. I say, God, here I am. Here I am. I'm coming to you. I'm going to allow you to work in my life. I don't know everybody's story and I don't know anybody's story. Somebody in here is struggling with a sickness. And it's not a prophetic thing. I'm not a prophet. Huh? You need to step out and come up here and allow us to pray for you right now in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus bring them on, God. I need some help with the sisters. If you could come up, some of the sisters could come up and help us pray for the sister that's coming up here on the side right now in Jesus' name. Never repented of your sins, never been filled with the Holy Ghost, you've never been baptized in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. What a blessed day it would be. Yes. What a blessed day.
today. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that word, Brother McKee. Thank you for a word from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I failed to say it earlier, but don't forget regular services this week. Tuesday noon prayer. I won't be able to be there, but if you can, come. Wednesday evening, 7.30 Bible study. Thursday morning prayer, 7 a.m. Even if you're not able to be here, spend time in prayer. We're built on prayer. We need that interaction with the Lord. Let's all stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, sweet Jesus, for your word today. Thank you, God, for speaking to our hearts. Oh, Jesus. Help us to follow. Help us to forget those things behind us, oh God. Help us to reach towards you every single day. Lord Jesus, we need you. God, I pray your blessings upon everyone in this place today. God, I pray your protection. I pray your healing. I pray your strength. Be with us, oh God. Dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. And we'll thank you for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You all are dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you later on this week. God bless you.